All right, we got Buzzy Fisher with us uh, this time around on Aired Out. Uh, live from the Aired Out Podcast Studio uh, and ASP Financials and Fly in the Wall Productions, Main Street in Barrie. Buzz Fisher with me, uh, sitting right next to me. and Not too close. I, yeah, not too close. No. I, I, hope, um, I hope we can get through this. This uh, this episode together without getting arrested, pal. I mean, let's let's kill some chickens. <sighs> Get it done. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, buddy! I love seeing you, man. I, I, the last time I had you on this this podcast was uh, 2019. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you you. I think it was the spring. It was the spring of. It was. Um, we uh, I came on to talk about the Just Breathe uh, suicide prevention walk that we put together. Yes. Uh, that ran at Thunder Road uh, in May of 2019. Um, so we came on. That all came together in about four months. Yeah. Uh, I came on and talked to you shortly before, like a couple weeks. Yeah, I remember. And, and that. I never really followed up. Um, yeah. But uh, just so I know, I'm pretty vocal and active on Facebook, so. Yeah. And Instagram, and have you ever heard of TikTok? Holy shit! Oh my god, are you doing TikTok? Um, you know, here and there, but really, you, you can only do so many naked fucking karaoke things. And yes, and you know, and I've seen you do the naked karaoke thing. I, I mean, mean it just yeah, didn't. I, I, you know, I was, it was on an awkward. Empty, it was awkward it was the way awkward. that. It yeah, was. You, you kept hollering free bird. It was fucking, yes, and fucking it, weird. And, and stop, and and I had an empty stomach. It wasn't a good. Experience. I don't remember that part. Uh, not at all. But anyway, yeah. so the uh, Just Breathe walk. Yeah. Uh, we ended up with about 400 people showing up. Um, somewhere, or we raised about four grand. Uh, Are four, you serious? Four thousand dollars was it was uh, in that one night. One night. Um, and more than that, I think um, we've heard from a lot of people, and I still hear from people because yeah. the page um, yeah. for the event is still up. Yeah. And I still hear from people who. Um, kind of felt alone yeah and i understand that i mean sure my god this was this was pre-covid dude it was this was this is uh, and covid is a big reason why we haven't had part two um i think you know we've talked about it um i've talked some especially with uh with a couple of the 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 co uh organizers yeah uh casey and alicia um I've talked to them some, and uh, I think we're, we're we're certainly looking to do it again. Um, I don't think that it's going to be at the same place. Okay. I think Thunder Road, um, although it was awesome, and for me it was great because of my connection to the track. Right, um, right. And, and and I will be forever thankful that, that Chris Michaud and Pat Malone allowed us to do it there. Sure, sure. And they were so supportive. Um, but I think that the – you know the logistics of the track mm. it, it's tough to walk around it. i mean if people mm. who haven't walked around that track it's tough um some of the people that we want up there uh who wanted to come out just weren't able to walk around the track right um so i think we're gonna look probably at like Barrytown rec area yeah um but it's what should my god i mean look at the track they have up there absolutely amazing it's perfect they have the pavilion you could do you know your food all that stuff um so I think that we're going to look towards that. If, again, we're still, I'm very leery of COVID still. Yeah. I don't want to be the reason that people come together and sure. end up getting sick. Sure. Um, have you had it yet? Have I had COVID? Yeah. yeah you I have. had uh, Thanksgiving we spent with having COVID. Um, and it was pretty amazing. Um, See, you could have just fucked with me right there. And you, you, you missed it. I, I threw it at you. Oh, no, I'm lying. You didn't dude. catch it. You did not catch it. You could have said that you have it right now. You could have. Well, I mean, you, I'm going to wait till the but end. But you went with the last November thing, and that just blew everything. I'm waiting till the end. Uh, right. I'm going to lick all this shit on the way out, <laughs> and then and then you and Raylene can clean it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you have at it. But oh yeah, so God. what was yeah. cool with Thanksgiving, we were, Juan and I both had it. Um, oh, my God. And uh, so we didn't do the, the Thanksgiving, obviously, with anybody else. Sure. And we had friends who... I only have ever met through Facebook. Um, Rita Avery, I can never say enough good things about. Um, she stopped down not once but twice. She dropped off a full complement of of snacks and pregame hors d'oeuvre shit. Wow! And then came back later and dropped off a full fucking meal. Are you like serious? It was un- and we've never have never really met. But a local Vermonter. Absolutely. See, that's what I'm talking about. Yep. I, mean, I love that. That it's, is so cool. It's uh, it's pretty amazing the people who are just there. And she didn't do it because she wanted me to come on this on this thing and right. talk about her, you know. Right. Um, sure. It was just people wanted to make sure that people were all right. My and that's, God. 
I think that that speaks volumes. Sure, it does. I'm kind of an asshole. Yeah. Um, no, come on. Well, Are you serious? I'm kind of, I'm kind of. I'm, I should preface this whole thing with some of what I say is going to be true. Some of it, I don't. You know, you can figure out whatever the hell it is. I don't care. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, I'm me. Sure. And nobody. I mean, money means nothing to me. I I give away more pictures than I sell half the time. Yeah. Um. We'll get into the photography stuff, um, which is the main reason I guess I'm I'm probably here. Yeah. Um, but it's not about that for me. For me, it, it, life is about people. It's not about all that other shit. It, it's about people in Stephen King books. That you know we we have to draw a line Understand. somewhere. Understand. Um, but beyond that, it's you really just got to worry about making sure other people are okay. Yeah. Um, because if other if the people around you aren't okay, and that's you know from your mental health mm. um i've struggled with with issues of mental health my entire life i never really knew it mm. i never really realized that i wasn't leaving my house because i was scared to mm-hmm. um and that's I, I think i think i think almost all of us can say that there's there's something that's running through us that is not good in the noggin absolutely i think for me mm. a, a great mm. example is when i was a kid mm. my mom um would take me to Thunder Road every week. I, I spent every Thursday at Thunder Road. Bear Ridge back then ran on on Fridays. A family friend, um, Leon Snow, we would go. He would take us over there. I was like eleven, and he would just my. It was a different time. You, your parents sure. could just say, "Yeah, get the fuck out." We don't. Yeah, know. right. So uh, I would go to Bear Ridge every Friday. Um, my eighth grade graduation, both of my brothers got got hunting rifles. I got season passes to Thunder Road. Mm. Ah, um, ah. But after when I turned like 15 or 16, my social anxiety really got kicked into the notch. I didn't go to the track again until th- 2010. Mm. I loved it, but I couldn't do it. Interesting. My best friend raced there. Uh, Randy Campbell and I were like brothers, and uh, I never could go watch him race. Uh, Timmy Campbell, who you're really familiar with. Timmy, sure. Um, that, that son of a bitch ran down south. What's he, what's he think? He's a, just a, I don't God. know. He's a dick. Now he lives in a town ta- in Ocala oh, where there's racetracks yeah. all over the place, and he's too much of a pussy. But yeah, well, yeah plus, he, what, 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 what's he putting on his pancakes down there? He's not putting I, maple syrup on that. I'm not sure he ever oh, did God. anyway. But he's the reason that I got into Thunder Road. Yeah, um, because it's mostly good, because he's a cheap bastard. That's true. Uh, he was racing the street stocks 2010. <laughs> And uh, he had been on me forever. Yeah. I had started, photo- my photography started, all right, I'm going to do this real quick. I'll jump back. Bro. Creative you're, outburst. You're, you're driving right Perfect. now. This is, your hands are on the way. I'm, I'm sitting in the goddamn back seat, my man. This so, is you. Yeah. So when somebody asked me, like, how do you want to die? And I said, I want to die, you know, sleeping like my grandpa was, yeah. not screaming like all the people in the back seat of his car were. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> um so uh, creative outburst came i i actually my whole life i wanted to be a writer that was yeah. that was all i wanted um yeah. the first books i read were the bible and fucking moby dick and i read a lot of shakespeare um was it in that order was it the bible first then moby dick i think i interspersed them uh. um i was I did, so this is where so you were reading. All, you were reading both at the same time. That, yeah, and they were. You really are fucked in the head. You have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> and I say that with the I'm I'm agnostic. Yeah. So I had beliefs. I went parochial school. Yeah. They beat the, they beat them out of me. So <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but Creative Outburst was a publication back around. 1988 or 89 before most of you were fucking born um that was poetry that i wrote and other people's poetry that i published for them that i created on a brother yes eight line uh, you know just an old word processor yeah that it would take me fucking months because every time you had a a screw up you'd have to go back and fix it yes Uh, you couldn't save it was worthless nobody knows what a word processor is anymore we we've we don't we don't hear these words well the cool thing my dad his the office for the company he worked for had a copy machine Ah. now i can say this because he doesn't work there anymore so they can't fucking fucking fire his ass but we would go there and we would make copy after copy after copy. And I had subscribers all the way down the East Coast into Florida. Come on. For just shit that I wrote. And it was like, 
And it was called Creative Outburst. You created that. I did. Um, and wow. I was I published a number of people who now live locally. Um, a number of people who I published I have since passed on. Yeah. Um, there's one girl from Philadelphia who was the most amazing writer. And this goes back yeah. 35 years ago. Yeah. How are you finding these people? I mean, this isn't Facebook. At, at that time, AOL oh. on a 14.4, you know, you had to listen to that fucking whistle, the connect. Yes. Yes. And <laughs> I would just, beyond that, I don't really remember how we connected. Isn't um, that amazing? Do you, That's amazing. Did you know Terry Richter? Do you remember when the uh, Rocky 802, uh, Taylor Arsenault? Yeah, Arsenault, they had that yep. little group um, yep. that was really, <clears throat> really dead set on promoting music in Vermont. Yes. Well, Terry, who was part of that, thirty five years ago, was one of the the authors that I published, and I had never met her. Wow. We we hooked up at Gusto's. Um, they were I I shot a show over there for for 802, and. Uh, and it was fucking amazing. And it wow. was she's she's doing dog rescue stuff, and she's moved out west. And I, yeah, but it was just the connections that you make are so cool. In 1994, so I I wrote and I wrote and I wrote, um, and that was what created about what was supposed to be was about writing. Mm-hmm. In 1995, we were involved in a pretty serious car accident. You were. I was. Um, my son Cody was 33 days old. He was in the back seat. And uh, we got hit. We were sitting still and got hit at about 45 from behind. And it just folded us, folded us up. Um, lifted the rear of our car up, put us under a dump truck, and we pushed the dump truck. We left 28 feet of skid marks pushing a dump truck. The guy driving the dump truck got a fucking whiplash um, because the guy that hit us was reading a map. So I went through, I mean, I still haven't, ta- I haven't taken a, a pain-free step since September 10th, 1995. Oh, just, my God. But the worst part about that is my mind no longer focuses and allows me to write. So whenever you read the little tidbit, the, the tidbits and shit like that on Facebook. Yes. I love doing that. I just, I'm working on a novel that I've been working on most of my adult life. Yeah. So, so am I. <laughs> um, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but what that did was that accident, uh, the settlement that I got from that, I used to buy my first camera. Because it was like, I need another outlet. I, I can't do this anymore. It was killing me not to be able to write. So I bought a, uh, my first camera was an Olympus something or other. They printed really good about the size of a fucking postage stamp. Mm. Anything better than that? Anything bigger than that? You couldn't print a four by six with it. <laughs> my God. Um, and it cost me 700 bucks wow. or something. Wow. And then HP used to make camera, digital cameras. Hewlett Packard. I don't know if that's mine. I so. think that's me. Um, so I, uh, I bought an HP that was four megapixel, which yeah. was, that was a cat's ass. Wow. The only, the great thing about it is you could drop that out of the second story window and, sure. it, and it wouldn't even fucking scratch. <laughs> right. It didn't, it didn't hurt nothing. Um, oh my God, dude. So I started doing photos and I remember my, I, I had a neighbor whose daughter was going to be a senior in high school and we were just bullshitting and, uh. She wasn't going to have any senior portraits because they couldn't afford it. Senior portraits are one of those rackets where a lot of people... Now it's changing a little bit, but at the time, you had a few companies that did them. And because there were so few, they could charge whatever they were. It was just a sure. fucking... Yeah. And that, I, again, I don't work on money. I don't give a shit. Um, so I did... I started doing senior portraits just... Just here you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and some of those are, those are her, some of the first ones I did were Don and Becca Smeedy's daughter, Courtney. Uh, I did her senior portraits. Um, <coughs> I did, and then I did <coughs> Dustin's a year, a year later, their son. Um, and I, now the nice thing is I only do the ones I want to. Yeah. If I don't want to work with you, I don't work with you. I, don't, I <coughs> you can't pay me enough to work with you. Why would you not work with me? If why would you not work with someone? What what? Uh, if I think that it's gonna just be a pain in my ass, I don't need money that much. I don't do weddings. I've been offered seven eight hundred bucks. I've been offered a room in Maine on a beach to go shoot a fucking wedding. It's like I'm not even gonna go to your wedding. Bobby Hurdling is saying, "Watch your mouth, Buzz." Hey, hey. So he we have, we share a birthday. So I know when he needs a fucking spanking, don't I, Bobby? And, and Jerry Portress is all worked up. Holy Christ. I got a great story about the early days of fucking Facebook for Jerry. J- 
Jerry and I used to be neighbors. Please, please spill it, dude. I'm, I was sleeping one morning. Let it go. Jerry calls me and was like, "What the fuck is this guy?" Because it wasn't. We weren't. That wasn't. We weren't in that relationship. Yeah. He called me and said, "Are you in? Are you in fucking France? Where did you call me, Jerry? Yeah. <laughs> you know." He says, "Well, I'm talking to you right now." So I went downstairs and I logged on to my Facebook and watched myself have a conversation with Jerry. And I watched for 20 minutes as they went back and forth. Somebody had hacked into my account and they were going back and forth trying to get money out of Jerry. Jerry had called me so I could watch. And he was, and I'm so thankful that he did because he, he said, I almost helped. And then I real, and then I was like, instead of, you know, he knew Wanda obviously because we were neighbors. He bought his first camera from you that you paid for. <laughs> well, that could have been, but the guy, so he asked the guy, like, how's, how's Stephanie or what? I don't remember what name he came up with. And the, the person didn't correct that, he, that it should have been Wanda, so Jerry knew it wasn't me. Sure. So it was just, that's kind of, it was so hilarious and, and helpless feeling to sit there and watch myself have this conversation. Like, I don't think I would have said it that way. Just pull the plug out of the wall? It wouldn't have mattered. It wasn't, they were on their, their computer just using my system. <laughs> oh my so it was you just along for the ride. Wow. You know, my mom is on Facebook, and I I hope we have it situated now, but she was getting people that were cloning her account, like, fucking every week. Mom is Sylvia. It is. Dad is Bert. Correct. Uh, Sylvia and Bert Fisher over in Northfield. Correct. How's Cody doing? Where, I, I haven't, honestly, dude, it's it's been probably 15 years since I, he was a little kid last time I saw him. Yeah. Um, I started shooting the... Colgate Country Showdown for you guys when yes. you were a froggy. Oh my God! Back yes. when you were at the Alan Jones Brothers, whatever the fuck the name of that building is down there. That's now the Ma the uh, Granite Museum. Yes, Washington County Field Days. Washington County Field Days. Wow, that's way. Yeah. That's the beginning. And I did that mostly because I knew Jim mm. Severance. Yeah. Um, Jim used to DJ at a bar right up the street here. Yes. That be became the the strip club yes um but at the time before that I th was it rescue club before the strip club i don't i never really remember the name yeah. rescue club so i used to help i was a bouncer yes so i would help him carry he, his shit in and he out. told me he's told yeah. me this yeah Go that ahead. was 30 30 oh my god 30 years ago um but jim and i we were always just friends and then yeah. when the colgate thing came up yes and i did that uh, like a lot of my stuff, I fucking invite myself with my camera. And then you if you don't want me here, throw me out. I don't care. Right. Um, but I shot that and uh, started doing concerts for you guys. I saw Luke Bryan uh, before he was famous. I saw him doing uh, mostly cover songs. And I told everybody that would listen, this fucking guy couldn't sell ice cream. <laughs> Absolutely couldn't stand him. And then obviously he's the biggest, he's bigger than fucking Elvis. Wow. And I still wouldn't buy ice cream from him. So <laughs> I guess... I, it is what it is. Now, do you do you like country music? I love music. Um, I would. I was a DJ um, when I was sixteen or seventeen over at Goddard. Mm. Um, they used. It was just a community thing. Yeah. Um, my first time on the air, uh, and I've told you this. My first time on the air, I said the call letters wrong. It's, it's WGDR, and I said WGRD, and the fucking program director lost his mind. Oh, yeah. And reminded me it was goddamn radio, so WGDR. Oh, see, yeah. I Later, though, uh, Steve Perry, his song, Oh, Sherry. Yeah, Oh, Sherry. Yeah, in early uh, 90s. Um, yeah, late 80s. Late 80s? I think. Okay, all right. Well, I was, this was before CDs, so I have, I'm dubbing one record in studio, yeah. and the other one's going over the air, and I lift the needle on the wrong one because I'm a little bit stoned. Yeah. And. Wait a minute. You've smoked marijuana? What? Yes, it's what? legal now. What? Not lately. Go ahead. She left. I, I know. I shocked her. She left. So you put the... Uh, put, so you... I dropped the wrong needle. Yeah. And said, fuck, <laughs> just in that dead spot. <laughs> yeah. I had a friend over here in Barry that was uh, recording my show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I got in trouble for that. But the cool story for, from my GDR days, I was getting a tattoo uh, four or five years ago from Greg Wood over at Barry the Needle. Yeah. And... Uh, we were just bullshitting because you know when you I don't you don't have a tattoo right no I didn't think so you're too pristine <clears throat> well but, I do but I can't show it to you thank you um but so we were just talking about the old days yeah and he w we were talking that he uh, I'm not exactly sure how it worked out but 
He had called because I always, when I was on the air, yeah, I started every show with balls to the wall by accept, yeah, and I had to play, I had to play request, sure, and this is fucking Goddard. So you might imagine some of the requests. This was back when radio was fun as hell, absolutely. But I would play no matter what. You're hearing balls to the wall. I don't care whatever else we're playing. Yeah, we're, you know, and then I might play Tchaikovsky or fucking. Bach or yes. whatever it is, and then we're going back to ACDC and yeah, and we were chatting about, it and I was laughing about it, and he fucking remembered calling in and making a request for his cousin, and I remember fucking playing it yeah because I was so happy it was uh I don't even remember what Judas Priest song I think yeah. yeah and I was so happy that somebody was listening to real music, and it was like but. 25 years later, we're ch- chatting about it. It was like, yeah, that was me. <laughs> I played yes. that for you. <laughs> but the Steve Perry thing, that cost me my gig over there because that was the back end. then you couldn't say fuck on the radio. Yeah. Probably can't now either. But No, no, please don't say right. fuck. Please. Please don't. Um. <laughs> so, again, wow. so like with the just inviting myself. Yeah. That's how I got the, the gig with the Vermont Ravens. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. I did that for uh, nine. I think I started in. 2007 ish, 2000 maybe I don't know. We just had him on the podcast a couple weeks ago. Good. They need. I'm no longer involved, and I haven't been for a few years. But they're they're trying so hard. Yes, they and are. they truly need support. Well, they need players. They need staff. They need volunteers. They, they need exposure. They need. That's exposure. what they have always needed. Yes. What it frustrated me so much when I was involved was. And I don't. I never wished ill on the Frosties. Yeah, but they people would fucking line up to give them money, and meanwhile, and even when they closed down, that never shifted to the Ravens. The Ravens, they're you know, yep. two out of the first three years made it to the championship game. Had we had players that could leave the fucking state without ankle bracelets, we would have had a chance to really. And there are some some solid dudes on there. Some guys on there that I'm still. Yeah. Really, I wouldn't say I'm really close to, but that I that have made an impact on my life that mm-hmm. I'm I'm forever grateful for, and I'm more than anything grateful for Wanda because everything that I every venture I've gotten involved in, mm-hmm. she's come along. Mm-hmm. There was more DNA, like from blood from players from the Ravens in our car fucking car, than you can because we'd be at a game at Spalding and somebody would have to go to the hospital. She'd load him in our fucking car, and you're going. <laughs> It was hilarious, <laughs> and then you know you bring them back, and they're they got the the stitches everywhere and all yeah, that shit. And that's I, awesome. Go back in the game. So you were shooting. Uh, you, you've been shooting uh, Ravens, Frosties. I didn't shoot the Frosties. You didn't shoot the Frosties. No, no, I shot the Ravens for nine seasons. Oh my god! Um, and then I started at Thunder Road in 2010. Thunder Road and Barrett. It seems like you've been at T Road longer than. Than You're telling that. me, holy Christ! Wow, it, is, it, it makes for long seasons, dude. Every driver that I've had in here has talked about you. Um, it just—that's not always a good thing. No, dude. They, they everybody's got just nothing but great things to say about you. You're you're the. I'm, I'm guessing that you have had to <clears throat> grow some eyes in the back of your head moving around that track. Thunder Road have is, you have you almost been hit? Thunder Road is pretty easy. It's fairly easy um, because we're a long ways from the track. Yeah. Um, at Claremont in 2020, there was an asphalt mod um, who was going somewhere around 7,000 miles an hour. Um, I was standing beside. There's a little by the go kart track. I'm sure. I'm guessing you haven't been over there, but there's a go kart track on the back stretch, um, and there's a big concrete. Basically, a concrete building. Okay. And I'm thinking, these fuckers ain't going to hit this. Of all that, there's two things you don't hit at Claremont. You don't hit the concrete building, and you don't hit the concession stand in the pits because that old lady seems crabby. Sure. So don't piss her off. And that's where the beer is. No, no, there's a beer garden in turn one. All right. Um, but I was by the concrete building, and, and shit happens fast. A car came off there, and I was right beside a couple of big, big tires. Um, I was kind of leaned up against them, and a, the car hit it. I have no idea how fast, but it threw my fat ass across the infield. Really? Um, and I guess from the stands, it didn't look good because I landed. The, there were a couple lines of tires that would separate so the go-karts couldn't hit the building. Yeah. Well, when that this 
car came in at an angle and hit the big tires, it separated those, and that's where I landed, was in between them. So everybody in the stands was like, oh, well, I'm glad you landed on the tires. Like, there was no tire. That was just concrete. <laughs> that was where I landed. But so, I didn't hurt my t- camera. The worst well, part. That well, was, that, that was the most important question I was just going to ask you is what happened to the camera? That one, I was able to protect it. Um, the worst part was the stagnant water from those fucking tires. Yeah. I got soaked. And Al, who's become one of my best friends, Alan Ward, uh, and everybody should go visit his Smug Mug page. We we work together a lot um, at different racetracks. I would not be at different at different race track, race tracks if not for Al. We're riding back from Claremont. It's fucking cold, and we got the windows down because it smelled so bad. It was awful. Now, was this stagnant water getting into any open wounds on you? Oh no, I, I don't. I don't have open wounds. So you you didn't get hurt. You from no, that? not really. Um, just just a uh, pain don't hurt. You know, it, I don't know if you've watched Roadhouse. Yeah. That's my favorite movie. Pain don't hurt. <laughs> how, how long did you stink of this uh, shitty stagnant water? Well, I got water? home. I, I woke up Wanda because I, I didn't want, if I slept in in the morning, if she was up before me, because a lot of people thought that that I was seriously injured. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want her to hear from other people, oh, he about got fucking killed. Yeah. Only because I don't want to listen to it. Yeah, it's of like, course. It is what it is. Right. Um. And then I took a shower and got that stink off, but it was pretty rough. <laughs> I have lost some equipment. I have lost some cameras. But no close calls at, at Thunder Road, though. Not that I can think <clears throat> of. Um, Barrage, I've had a couple. I've had, I've had a few at Barrage. And I started at Barrage um, in August of 2010, so halfway, a little over halfway through the season. Um, and I absolutely love that track. So what do you do when when you arrive at Thunder Road? You you got your your I guess your credentials. You pass. You, you know where you're going. You know what you're doing. Are, do you begin at the pits? When when are you allowed on the in, uh, on the? So typically, infield? I show up um, a couple hours before showtime. I go through the pits through the pit gate. Yeah. Um, I kind of chat with folks. I like how Thunder Road is set up because the the street stock pit is closest to the pit gate. Yeah. Pit street stocks are my people. Um, Tigers, late models, that's all awesome. Great people. There's some incredible people at, at the track. But Street Stock, I have a lot of friends that race in that division, as well as the Junkhead Warriors. Frankie Putney and I are really good friends. Justin Blakely and I are friends. Uh, Paige Whittemore and her brother Tyler are great. Uh, there's just a lot of really, really cool people that I like. Um, Tommy Campbell, I've known since, you know, Timmy's nephew. I've known yeah. Tommy since he was four. Um, so I, I make my way through stopping to chat with people to see – you know, who's pissed at who, who, who. yeah, because that's always going to be where, all right, so that guy's a dick, so I'm going to take pictures when you guys are close to each other, because oh. some, you know, you got to figure out, yes, I'm in the infield, which means I'm looking at the whole world through a little square, right, you know, everybody in the stands is like, well, how the fuck do you miss that, and it's like, well, because it was behind me, I was <laughs> making, I was making fun of you, uh, at least a month ago, here on the air, saying, um, Something to the effect of, I I wonder what kind of a buzz Buzz Fisher gets from being so dizzy. Because oh, I, I, I see you just, just turning in circles for hours taking pictures. It is tough. I actually, it's... My God. I've had numerous issues of vertigo. In fact, I just went through PT again recently um, because it is... There's no worse place to be when your head starts fucking spinning than having cars, especially yeah. at Thunder Road with that new wall. My God. Because the sound just echoes back. The tigers out there with the new tires, the, it is so loud. Um, so when you get the vertigo stuff, when you start spinning, it's it's pretty rough. Got a comment here. It's amazing how he gets the shots he does on track action. Unfortunately... I was Mr. April on his crash calendar. I could have <laughs> I could have been featured multiple times on his crash calendar with his spot on action shots last season. He does great work, uh, Patrick Tibbetts. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, I had I had a hard time picking one of his. Yeah. And he had the weirdest fucking wrecks because he would be right on the front stretch. And well, somehow it's he, he drives to... like a mailman. I mean, well, that's but, why. What I don't get is he would get together with cars, and all of a sudden his ass end is up in the fucking. I was like, I don't know how you keep doing that. It, but 
It's yeah, the it's the was, uh, it's the air shock mounts there that are underneath there. I'm, I know they're probably stretching the laws, the the, the rule book, but yeah. you you do you. Yes. You know? <laughs> oh my god. So how so how'd you get the the Thunder Road gig? Did you did you did you contact them and say, Hey, I wanna be your photographer? I am so I am not their photographer. Alan Ward is a track photographer. Two thousand ten, um, Tim uh, Tim Campbell finally convinced me to put a decal on his car, so I did that. Did you have to pay him, or did he have to pay you? I fucking paid him. That's the last person I've ever paid to. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I put a decal on his car, and then it was like, well, I got to go to the first race. So I went to the first race, and he fucking won. And it was like, and he mentioned me and, and thanked me and, and Victor yes. Lane. Yeah, it was like. Well, that's pretty cool. Yes. Um, so then I had, at that time, I had two stickers. I had them on his car and Vern, Witter, Vern Wooders. Okay. They were kind of teammates. And then I got two more made up, and I put them on Travis Hull and David LaFleche. Okay. So you had the four of them all driving Mustangs. I called them the four horsemen, but I didn't ever say that out loud because it sounded stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it now because it was fucking 12, 13 years ago. Um so Tim was so at Thunder Road they have what they call the um, I don't know what the fuck they call it at the beginning of the week they bring out the winners from the last week yeah the parade of champions I guess yeah, yeah. and they introduce them mm -hmm. so I had to go to that because my driver had won my car is going to be there and but I was paying my thirty five bucks and I was standing in the in the pit grandstands and in 2010 I paid every week I paid to get in I stood up there I did. All kinds, you know, it's a lot of work. Sure. 2011, I was in the infield. I don't remember really how, I, I, I don't remember exactly who the media person was that, that let that happen. Yeah. 2012, I wasn't there at all. Um, I was ready to go. Uh, racing started on Sunday. On Thursday, I got an email saying, we have all of our photographers and you're not one of them. Wow. Which I get, it was just, a, there was a lack of communication of some sort. Um, they had some really good photographers at the time. David Heath was still there. Uh, David was an amazing track photographer. Um, Alan was there. Uh, Leif Tillotson was there. Um, Eric LaFleche was there often. So I got it. Um, but man, it was like, I'm not fucking paying to come. I wasn't going back to the same thing I had done in 2010. Sure. I had built somewhat of a following. Uh, my Smug Mug account, I was getting three or 400,000 views a week. Um, and I was like, I'm just not. So I didn't go to 2012. I stuck to, to Bear Ridge. Um, had a great time. I love that track. Yeah. 2013. You had to take like four or five showers, though, after you leave there. Oh, it's rough. I go through so much fucking camera equipment. And shampoo. Yes. Well, especially with his hair. Yeah. Holy Christ. Right. Um, but then after David Heath passed, yeah. um, uh, Alan Ward became track photographer. Mm -hmm. And I talked to... Um, I think it was Alex Wickham. I'm not exact, and I know you've had him in, right? I don't it's remember. Been so many, um, so many. Oh no, that was a different. That was a different podcast I was watching. Okay. Um, but they said, "Well, we'll have you back as an event photographer. You're not shooting the races. You're shooting the event." And I said, "I don't give a fuck. You call it whatever you want to, but I'm going to do what I'm. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Sure, whatever I got to do to make you happy." Um, so I would take some pictures of the crowd and they'd get pissed off me and give me the finger and cause they're there to watch the race. They're not there to, to entertain the fucking fat guy with the camera. And I get that. So I would do, uh, I would do my thing and, and they invariably would get a lot of comments from fans about, they like how I do things. I, my style is a little bit different. I, I'm not sure. Yep. I didn't learn the way Alan is an incredible photographer. Al, um, and he's been around racing his whole life. He worked on the pit crew for one of the old late model drivers um, for a number of years. And then he's been, you know, picked up a camera in the 80s. Yeah. You know, fuck, I, I was born in 1970. He talks about shit that was before I was born. Like, I don't know. Right. And he has a, a rat trap for a memory. I mean, I, you talk about any racing stat and he, he can tell really? you. It's like, I can make something up, but chances are pretty good I'm lying to you. Yeah. Because I don't fucking know. <laughs> Um, but he knows all that stuff. Um, and we just became really good friends. Um, now he and I, it's just us, um, on big races. There'll be a couple other people out there. Um, but on a typical Thursday night is Al and I, 
and we work really well together. Uh, a lot of people think that we should be in competition yeah. um, because we're both trying to sell shit. Yeah. Honestly, I send people to his photo booth because he has all the photo booths at the track. Yeah. Uh, both Barrage and Thunder Road are his. I'm not track photographer anywhere. I'm just allowed to do my thing. Um, I send people to him uh, to buy stuff. Uh, I do a lot of custom collage stuff. Yeah. Um, but but folks can can buy pictures after a race on yes. on your website. Absolutely. <clears throat> so my site, uh, creativeoutburst.smugmug.com, or just go through creativeoutburst.com, uh, and you can find links. You can buy them through the site, have them delivered. Uh, if you do that, they get printed by a, a professional lab and mailed directly to you. Okay. Uh, the other option, if you're going to be at the track, is you can let me know the date, the image number, size, quantity, all that stuff, and I can bring to the track and meet you there, and uh, you can get them that way. That saves you shipping cost. Okay. Um, One more time. Creative Outbursts. Creative, so you can either do just creativeoutburst.com or creativeoutburst.smugmug.com. Okay, got it. Um, and like I said, my Smug Mug site, I have somewhere around 700,000 photos on there. Um, 700? Yes. Thousand? So racing, when I go to a race now, I normally, and I don't think the number is important. I know some people get excited about taking more pictures. Um, and I used to. Now, the more pictures I take, the more fucking work it is. Yeah. So I try to to stop that, but it's hard. Al is able to take, you know, much many fewer photos than I do and get better results. And I just, it's like, it's instinct. Mm. And I'm still working on it. I've been mm. there since 2010. I'm still working on it. Wow. Um, David Heath, when he was, you know, a track photographer, right up until like two, three or four years before he passed away, he was still using a 35 millimeter. He yeah. was using film. Wow. And he would take 400 pictures a night. And I was like, I just don't. Now, had I learned on, I didn't learn anything on a, on a film camera. I've never shot that way. I learned digital. So Al and I have a very different backgrounds. Um, so I wish that I had the, the knowledge that he does. Mm. Because he can make changes on the fly that it takes me a little longer to, to figure out what to do. Um, you know, because lighting changes everything. You can't take a picture without light. I don't care what you're doing. What's a typical in the lighting at, at Thunder Road is so different now. Oh my God, it's amazing. Which is killing so us. Be the trouble is at before with the old lights, we were the only ones that had half a decent chance of getting a good shot with a flash because we were close. Now with the lights, everybody in the stands with a fucking iPhone yeah. is our photographer. <clears throat> and it's like, so, and that's all great until I try to print them. And people don't realize that's, you know, with senior pictures and stuff like that. Right. Print them. How many pictures on average do you think you would take on a typical Thursday night at Thunder Road? Um, probably around thirteen or 1,400. Um, I use two cameras. I always have two cameras every track. Um, I use all Canon. Um, for my main, uh, for action shots, I use a very, very good 70 to 200 millimeter lens, uh, L series 2.8. Um, so it's really good in lower light, uh, really high quality cam, really high quality lens. Um, what, what's a camera like this cost? So that lens I had to buy because I, the one before that, um, now I replaced, um, because I use them at Bear Ridge, I usually have to replace the lens at least every three years. This one was, that one was about 2100 Um The flash that, <clears throat> excuse me, I used two um, identical Canon flashes. So, so if one doesn't work, I can just switch in the other one and it's all set. Quickly. Um, those were 600 a piece or so. Um, camera bodies, camera bodies is the cheap part. It's like when you get married. I mean, yeah. I don't. That's going to sound weird because I'm talking yeah. about being cheap, but right. the camera body is like the wife, the lenses are the kids. Wow. Oh. You can switch out the fucking, you can switch out the wife, but the kids are always there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can buy lenses you like and then figure out the lens, the body after. So yeah, I was going to, that was going to be a question of mine. What's more important, the, the camera or the lens? Lenses. Absolutely. It's all about the glass. Really? You know, that whole all about the base. It's all about the glass. Yeah. No kidding, um, man. For Victory Lane stuff, I use a 17 to 40, um, so it's wider angle. Yeah. Um, because you have to. You, there's no room to back up. 
if you back up enough to, for the 70 millimeter to work, yeah. there's people in your way. How, 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 how do you clean these cameras after a Bay Ridge shot and, and, and Thunder Road? How, how, do you, how do you keep them clean? Do you have, like a, do you, do you have stock in like this, the, the spray uh, compressed air stuff? Thunder Road is pretty, pretty easy. Um, first of all, the, the biggest thing is never change your lenses at a track. That's why you carry two cameras. I never take a lens off. Uh, if you take a lens off, it fills up with dirt and dust, and you'll never get dirt in it. Wow. So, Didn't even think of that. Um, so you, it's, uh, you have to invest. I mean, it costs money. So how do you clean your, your lenses? Um, soap and water. I just Bear Ridge? Really? No. <laughs> no. Um, soap and water. All right. No, I don't You're do soap and water. Holy now. Christ. You can get You're me fucking with me. So bad. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I... <laughs> they do sell uh, lens, <laughs> lens cleaning solution. Yeah. Um, I carry a little brush that I use at the track. Can you just put a cover over it and just keep wiping that off? Well, it depends on what you're trying to clean. Mm. I mean, the outside of my camera is dirty as hell. Yeah. It, it just, and I don't care that much. Um, what I'm more worried about is the lens. Yeah, right. Um, and when you get, even with, with the lens on all the time, you're still going to get shit on the sensor. Yeah. Which. Interesting. The trouble with that. So the cameras that I use, you're able, every time I shut it off. It shakes the sensor. Yeah. So that should shake off. If you have anything that's loose, it'll shake it off. Okay. Um, I really should get it clean. Should get both cameras cleaned. Yeah. Um, professionally. It just, I never do because it's just, every time you come up with that, it's cost money that I'm using sure. for something else. Because win- I don't really do a lot in the winter. I do custom stuff for gifts. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of Christmas collages and shit. But then I sit around and wait for race season. Yeah. Um, so I don't have a lot of extra money. You I, must be so excited. I mean, May 1st is coming up. I'm like, excited. Um, the beginning of the season is hard. Hmm. I have some health issues. Um, the, the beginning of the season is really difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thunder Road has been hard the, because when the light switched over, mm-hmm. and I'm not trying to whine about this shit again, but here we go. Um, when the light switched over, we used to have um, what I call my flower pots, where the light boxes um and you could sit there you could take a break whatever um when they switch the lights o- over there are, those don't exist anymore there's no place to sit um so i'm hopeful and I, we've we've talked about and we have a local company that is gonna um put in a bench a granite bench it just hasn't been able to happen um i'm really hoping that that happens soon because it, it Although, first of all, it, the idea is it's going to be a tribute to the track photographer David Heath um, because we had a little plaque on one of those flower boxes in Memorial, and when those went out, that went with them. Um, so that was never replaced. There, so there's nothing in the intro. And I, I don't know the correct uh, etiquette for how long you memorialize somebody, but, but David was a, a important to the track for 40 years. Um, for me as a photographer, I mean, I s- still often see him out there. Um, and I only worked with him for a few years. I know that he was, um, just important to the point where he should be memorialized there. And it's easy enough to put a plaque out. Could, could there be a little, um, perch set up somewhere in the center? So something to stand, to climb up and stand on. Yeah. There could be my ass anyone up there. No, no, fuck. You know all those all those cartoons about the fat guy falls off a fucking roof and he bounces. Yeah. Those are lies. They're just lies. There is a perch. So if you go up to the track, the tower that comes in pit the pit tower. Mm-hmm. So they they come onto the track on one side, go off on the other. Yeah. There's a little perch that hangs over where they go off the track. Sure. I've been out there. Yeah. Um, it's soft. That is really, really so. That is, there's a sign on it saying no more than two people. Right. And I'm two people. Or it's 200 pound limit. Well, yeah, fuck them. <laughs> I mean, this, this camera, all you people at home, this camera adds 177 pounds. Yeah, so please. just so you're aware. Um, I, I have to ask you, um, you talked about the beginning of Creative Outbursts and how it was uh, essentially uh, a publication that, that you were compiling together of of poetry of of people not just here in vermont but uh, all 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 mm-hmm. across the the area right um the northeast mo- mostly right um 
but I, I, I'm, I want to go. I want to ask you. I want to go back further than that. I, I'll make up something about you right now. Perfect. Uh, when Buzz Fisher was in third grade, um, he a lot of problems, and uh, with his teacher and, and concentrating and paying attention and, and fooling around and goofing off, and uh, his mom, uh, Sylvia, Sylvia, uh, went in for a uh, parent-teacher uh, conference. And uh, sat down, and the teacher said to Mom Sylvia, um, Buzz is very, very smart, but we think that he has these, um, for lack of a better term, these creative outbursts uh, that, uh, you know, he's, he's going to be successful in his life, but he's, he's got to try to uh, contain these creative outbursts, and uh, that's it. Yeah, probably exactly Was right. that a good story? I, I, I think I... I mean, can I get a fucking copy of this so I can start using yes. it? <laughs> yes. I, I think I was more when I was in jail. <laughs> oh I remember tell, uh, my daughter showed up with her boyfriend, one, with a, an old boyfriend once, and the first thing I said to him was I was in jail and I didn't mind it. Yeah, good. Never had a fucking issue. Good for you. <laughs> Never had an issue. <laughs> it is what it is. So how, how did you come up with the name Creative Outburst? I, I really don't know. Mm. Um and I think I spelled it weird. I think I spelled it with a K and some Z's because that yeah. was what was cool. And yeah. I don't know. I was high. But it's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't but know. it's been around for it a has. long time now. I'm, I'm incredibly humbled. Um, I do... So I have my logo that I created. Yeah, um, that's so awesome. It amazes me how many people buy shit that has my logo on it. I'm not... It, it, I'm 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 grateful when people buy pictures. If I take a picture of a race car and somebody buys it, that's awesome. But when somebody just buys my logo, it just I don't get it. Um, I I will never take that for granted. Yeah, it's uh, but it's it's the brand has been around it's for crazy. my God, dude. Um, there are hats, a long time. You know, I so I mentioned Stephen King earlier. I think um, I'm a huge Stephen King fan. And I'm a huge fan of his son, Joe Hill, who is also an amazing writer. And I met Joe Hill at a reading um, a few years ago. And I, was a, I gave him a creative outburst toque. And he put it on for a picture. We posed for a picture of him wearing a creative outburst. The, the moment of my fucking life. That's um, awesome. That was just awesome. Um, wow. I met... Um, it's been crazy to just... The people that I, I've known a long time that never yeah. gave a shit whether I, if I was on fire they would have drove by, right? And I get that, um, but I think that they realize that I'm I'm working hard. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people just think it's a monkey pushing buttons, and I and I play it off that way a lot. Well, you you know you you talk about you 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 spoke earlier about um, that you were a writer and and that this this car accident kind of uh, impinged on on your your creativity of being a writer. But I mean, honestly, when you have a camera in your hand, you're, you're writing the, the story you're, you're looking for the plot. You're looking for the highlights in the moments to, to capture as it's, as it's happening. I, I think that's artistically you're, you're writing. I think that it's, it's strange because there's, I do different types of photography. Um, just because I have, I have to, um, sure. I think, and I look at them very differently. So when you're doing sports like racing, um, racing for the most part, it's dictated what you're taking pictures of. Mm -hmm. If you're any good at all, mm -hmm. um, you kind of get an idea where shit's going to happen. Yeah. Um, this is science to it. And then you, and then it's luck. Honestly, when people say, well, how'd you get that? I was looking in the right direction. I don't fucking know. Yeah. I, you know, I hit the button. Um, but this, the talent is in knowing which direction to look. Sure. It's figuring that out. I do um, some landscape stuff. Not a lot. I was going to ask you about uh, art, artistic stuff, nature, and, and things like that. Totally different animal. Yes. You do any of that? I do some. <clears throat> um, I don't do a lot of animal shit. I, my back is pretty bad. Hmm. Uh, I don't whine about it a lot, but I have um, spinal stenosis and I have uh, wow. facet arthropathy. Um, the last, um, the last MRI that I had, which goes back five or six years, um, I had three or four discs that were pretty much shot. Um, 
So I'm pretty close to the car. Understand. Uh, you know, I don't do, I don't mm. climb Spruce Mountain anymore. <clears throat> Understand. Um, but I, I created um, a macro studio. So macro photos are really up close. That's the whole idea. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people shoot fucking spiders and yeah. stuff like that. Nah. Water droplets. I love water droplets. That is, I, uh, I set up a studio. I bought a bunch of little flashes. Um, I, I have a separate camera that I use in there. and uh, Right here in Barrie. Right in, in my house. Right in your house. And I was doing pretty well with that. Um, and then we got a puppy. Yeah. Now, we had we used to have a dog. Uh, we had Tori for eight years. Sure. Um, and it was the love of my life. And and I was pretty adamant that we were not having... I was not having another dog. I just... Well, I was going to say, brother, you, you and I are the same age. What, 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 what the hell... Are you thinking here about getting a puppy at this age? But um, well, this is like, what, what I was kind of kind rationale of, you're using. Here? I have no fucking rationale. Um, Wanda said, "I picked out a puppy and I'm picking it up tomorrow. Do you want to go?" Oh, <laughs> so, Jesus, Wanda. Um, which I, you know, we all have different needs, and her need was, you know, we ain't having any more babies. I know that. Um, you sure about that? Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm sure. <laughs> So, so she says we're getting a, a puppy, and we did, and he is he is amazing. Mm. Um, he's a mixed breed. Uh, the the rescue paperwork just said Heinz fifty seven for a, a breed. He is what he is. Um, but um, two weeks after we got him, Wanda had a total Heinz hip replacement. Seven. Oh my God! Are you kidding? Yes. So we're doing. Oh. He's doing great. Um, we're actually going to start puppy school because okay, the boy don't listen. No. I was so. Good. One of the things that I've done is I started... Um, is he pissing and shitting in the house? Oh, of course. I mean, okay. at least now I have somebody to blame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, Wanda, it's not me. <laughs> That's one of the things. Uh, I give life advice from Uncle Buzz every yeah. once in a while. I put I put little posts up, and one of them was, you know, if, if you drink a lot, get mm -hmm. a puppy, so that when your wife finds shit behind the couch, you can yes. say it wasn't you. Exactly. So now we have a puppy. Should be a t-shirt that says that. But go ahead. See, I can do that. Sean mm has a question. Who was that? Sean. Oh, Sean McCarthy. He just wrote. Oh, boy. Uh, he says, uh, I heard a rumor that you did a. Uh, when you ever hear the words rumor and Buzz Fisher together. From Chubby Rambo. This ought to be good. <laughs> uh, I heard a rumor that you did a sexy race car photo shoot of some redhead from Graniteville. Was it Frank? No. I was trying to think. <laughs> what the hell is this all about? Um, I mean, we all... We just all McCarthy it. making up shit about you? Usually. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all got to make a living. Mm -hmm. yeah, He's just true. pissed off that it wasn't... And we have, we, we have talked about the, the sexy Chubby Rambo calendar for 2023. Yes. Okay. Um, the trouble is... Every time we get together, he says it's too cold. I don't. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> I don't, he like blames a, the cold. Like a shrinkage thing. I guess. Okay. You know, I. I don't know. I got a zoom camera. I got a zoom lens, so we can. Well, we we just <laughs> just get it done. Will there be yeah. hot dogs involved? This is not going. It well. seems likely. As, if you know Chubby Rambo at all, you know there's gonna be hot dogs involved. We need to change the subject. We do. This is bad. Uh, Danny uh, Danny Doyle says, uh, get him the stickers for the enduro car. Yes. So I will have, um, I mentioned the uh, Creative Upper's logo. I have started, I started putting logos or decals on race cars. Okay. In 2013 or whatever. Well, I started in 2010, but yeah. they, they were costing me a fucking fortune. They were sure. 10, 15 bucks a piece. Right. Um, and I've shopped around and, and Andy Moore at M&M Custom Graphics over in East Fairley. Yep. Does incredible. He, the colored one that I gave you this morning, he made mm. those for me. Beautiful um, job. Absolutely. I don't give those to drop to the race cars. Mm -hmm. um, I use the the round one. Yeah. Um, or now I also have a bigger 802, but it's black and white. Um, but I've never charged drivers for decals, mm -hmm. and it's I usually go through seven or eight hundred dollars worth of decals that I give to drivers. <sighs> this year it's going to be a little tighter, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We'll see. Uh, I try, but. I try to never tell anybody no. The trouble with that is I then get people that want to put them on their fucking Winnebago. Right. It's like, I, you know, I've got a fucking 
1937 Ford that hasn't run since 1963 out by the fucking firewood. I need a sticker on it to hold it together. Sure. And I've always just said, oh, here you go. So we'll see. I love it. I love it. Uh, we've had quite a few drivers on this spring. Uh, yes. I'm excited for some of the younger guys, younger yeah. people. I know you have Caden coming on. Caden is the real deal. Caden's I, coming on Friday. He is. Uh, Friday afternoon. He is one of the best drivers up there in the street stocks. Uh, I'm excited to see him in the Tiger. Well, the, Caden Fisher is your uh, your nephew, right? So, um, Sure. Okay. I don't think there's that much talent in my family, but... He's are, you rela- a, are you related to, to Jamie Fisher? And, and... No. Okay. No. Um, not that I've ever been able to figure out, yeah. so I'm going to guess no. You might be. My dad is big in, in the genealogy, mm-hmm. and I think that he would have mentioned it at some point. Um, well, if if Caden hits it really big, then I am. Fuck yeah! I was just going to say, <laughs> then, then you could you could go around and you know when you travel outside of Vermont, you could say, well, you know, Caden Fisher, right? Well, there hey, you go. Star Wars was big in like 1977, right? Right. So like 1980, I'm going. I'm in fifth grade at fucking St. Monica's, yep. telling everybody that Carrie Fisher is my fucking aunt. <laughs> it was you, like absolutely, you, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, your aunt? Uh, my aunt. Oh, yeah. oh my god! Well, it can't be my mom because then well, it's like, why true. isn't she here? That's true. That's you know. true. Um, have, have you? I, I think the last time I chatted with you, we were talking about the uh, possibility. And this was a couple of years ago when you were on the on aired out uh, that you might be thinking about starting your own podcast. Was that? Was there any truth I, to that? I thought about it. Um, I do um, I do a bunch of different stuff just for fun. Yeah. My trouble is I, I because of the focus issues I have, it's hard to. Sure. to um, but I do what, what's called view from an island that that became pretty pretty popular, um, where I would do race reviews mm-hmm. and in view my own from style, an island view from the island. That's freaking I call, badass. I call the uh, the infield my island. That's it is so a, cool. Al and I, it, it's our island. We vote you to fuck off our island. Get yes. out. Get out. Right. Um, and it's because no matter how much chaos is going on, yeah. I am at peace out there. Yeah. I don't care if there's cars coming. I don't give a shit. I am, you know, Devil's Bowl. I love shooting. I'm hanging over a wall and cars are coming within inches. Wow. And I am so calm. You love that shit. Absolutely. I, I've never driven. Have you shot at Loudon? I've not. I've had the opportunity. I'm not really interested. Mm. Um, I think that uh, they put in a flat, a little small flat track. Yeah. Um, that they're running sprint cars right. and midgets, and I'd like to do that. Yeah. Um, I had the opportunity last year. There was a mix up with credentials, and yeah. it, so we basically only had one set. So I, I, Al went. Um, it was, it was, they were giving them to me instead of him, and mm-hmm. it was like, no, he, he's gonna go do this because that's. If you, have have you ever thought about doing any uh, video? Totally different animal. I haven't. I, I bought a few years ago. I bought a bunch of GoPros and shit like that. Yeah. Because, but my issue is it takes so long sure. to render stuff. Sure. Oh, and it, as you know. I understand. But on Facebook, I, so I do the view from the island where I do, um, I used to do predictions. Yes. And those were funnier than hell. Um, but then it was like. People would get pissed off because, like, oh, you pick me and I wrecked you fucking assholes. Well, yeah. So I'm not picking you next week. I, and you wrecked. God, I think I, re- <laughs> I think I remember that. I do those. I do those during the season. Um, I do fat guy reviews. How's that? So that started out. Where do you do those? I do those um, on. I, I end up putting them on my smug mug. I have a video site, mm. um, but then I share the links on Facebook. I haven't done any lately. It started off my endocrinologist because I'm diabetic yeah. and I have an insulin pump, yeah. um, which has been pretty amazing for me. Um, I wasn't always as fat. Just throwing that out there. Um, I quit smoking in uh, February of 2000. 2000. OK. Um, wow. I had two kids both separately said that's what they wanted for Valentine's Day. OK. So I quit. I haven't had a cigarette since I was smoking three packs a day. Haven't had a cigarette since. Six weeks later, I still felt like shit because the doctors had said, quit smoking, you'll feel better. So I quit smoking and they were lying. So six weeks later, I still felt bad and was tested and, my, and I was diabetic. Never knew it because the smoking was masked it. Was masking. Um, wow. The first year and a half, um, or about a little over first year, trying to 
get that straightened out, I put on 150 pounds as they switched medications in this because it was pretty out of control. Um, and then once I have, you know, now I've had the insulin pump for six years, six years, um, and things are pretty good. Um, weight's just always going to be an issue. It just is. Yeah. Um, yeah. It makes me easier to see, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to fucking kidnap me. If you're going to throw me in the trunk of your car, you're going to fucking earn it. <laughs> Better bring some oh cookies. My God. You, when, when you're... When you're <laughs> some cookies <laughs> when you're when you're on the track uh you're in the infield you, you can sense areas in the field where there's some tension you're waiting for something to happen yes but behind you is another one that's happening at the same time yes what do you do at that point you're, you're one man Hold on. with two eyes and one camera. I have, it's funny because some of my, some of, some of my friends have told stories. Um, Justin Blakely was, um, tried to run over me at, at, I don't remember if it was Justin or, or Vern Woodard, was trying to run over me at fucking Bradford. And, uh, and I was r- kind of, they say I was running, which I find hard to believe. I don't run. If, if I'm running, there's fucking police involved. <laughs> But they say that I was running, but taking pictures over my shoulder, <laughs> <laughs> which I could kind of see that part, like 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 straight back type stuff. Apparently, like just and running and yeah, got it. But that's <laughs> some of the, uh, you know, that shit happens. Yeah. Is, every time I step on the track, I realize, you know, I know, I might not come back up. Mm. You know, when we had the the incident at, the, at Thunder Road with. Uh, with the officials that got hit by a car. Yes. Um, we were in the infield and, you know, shot it. Mm-hmm. Um, the quietest I've ever heard a group that size. Coming off the track, there was not a fucking sound. Nobody was breathing. Nobody was breathing. It was amazing. Um, and we, Al and I, we talked to the police. We talked to the track owner. We got in the car and we drove to Devil's Bowl. Uh, we got down there just as the ambulance was leaving. One of the uh, sprint car drivers had rolled and ended up breaking his neck. And we were just driving in as they were driving out. And it was like, that's just part of the game. Um, you know, nobody ever wants to see any of that stuff. Um, I would never want to see some of the wrecks I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the most scared I've ever been or, or has to do with people I have no idea who they are. don't know. Um Tim Campbell had one of the worst wrecks um, that completely, that made me think about my capacity to, to capture stuff. Um, he was, I don't remember what year it was. Uh, he hit the wall on the front stretch, came back across sideways. Keith Lord in another uh, Mustang hit him and knocked all the fucking panels off his car. When the safety crew got to him, there was, there was no door. There was no nothing. Uh, he was out. And uh, the safety crew was talking to him, and he was kind of reaching through the through the bars outside. Uh, had no idea where he was, and it was like this is my brother. So wow. stuff like that is it, it's just was that in early early two thousands that crash? No, because I didn't start there to two thousand ten. Okay. All right, it would have been somewhere around two thousand fourteen, okay. fifteen, maybe. Okay, um, but. I was a journalism major in college, you know, the first time I went to college. And then I realized journalism was not for me. Um, What's the salary of a journalist now? Like, You know, it didn't even have to do it. It just had to do with integrity. Mm-hmm. I just, I couldn't understand the concept of the story. Be, mm-hmm. No matter what the, it didn't matter. The people involved didn't matter. Mm-hmm. It was just the story. And mm-hmm. that it was like, I want to write, but I want to write fiction. I want to write stuff that. It doesn't necessarily have to make people feel good, but I don't want to make people feel bad just because I want a byline. I don't so, want to do it. so when Timmy wrecked, you were you were studying journalism? No, I had I went to school. So here's, I quit high school, um, and I was going to go in the army. Back, this was around Desert Storm, um, which for most of you was a long time ago. Um, 
But I, so I went through ASVABs and MEPS and I got for, to the physical and I broke, I had broken my neck and they wouldn't take me. So it was all whatever. But in that process, you had to sign up for eight years to enroll, to enlist in the army. And if you had your high school diploma, you could do four years active and four years inactive. If you only had a GED, which I did, um, I would have to do six years active. Okay. I was like, I ain't fucking. So I went through, I contacted the adult diploma program and I did two and a half years of school in like six weeks and got my diploma. I got my diploma from Spalding, even though I've never gone to school there um, because I was, I went to school in Chelsea. Mm -hmm. um, that was one of the, Chelsea didn't participate at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so by the time I got my high school diploma, I was already in college mm -hmm. at CCB right. doing the journalism thing. Wow. Uh, because I just, I knew I wanted to write. I was doing like a journalism major with a minor in English yeah. um, and creative writing stuff. and Yeah. But that was back before you couldn't do anything online. I don't drive. I've never driven. Um, I've never had a license or permit or <laughs> I just really I again I had I've had some substance abuse issues in my past um, which caused other health issues and it became really clear really early that it would be dangerous for me to drive mm -hmm. that if I'm gonna take somebody out I'm gonna do it by myself mm -hmm. I'm not taking other people with me so how'd you get here today Wander dropped me off no shit yeah what a great lady she is. You and Wanda have been together for how long now? Uh, 27 years. Holy crap. No shit, you're telling me. Yeah. Is she pain in the ass to deal with sometimes? You, you know Wanda. Or is it more more like you, that you're the pain in the ass? Probably. <laughs> I, re I remember so well early days of Froggy in the morning, breakfast club. Almost every morning, uh, your grandma used to call. Not my grandma. Her her mom. Her, her mom. Her yes. mom. Her mom. Yes. yes. He used to call. Yes. Edie, Edie Blondin. Edie. Absolutely. Edie Blondin from Chelsea. Yes. My God. Yeah. She'd always request one particular song. And I, of course, I'm I, gonna, can't, uh, I can't remember. I don't know, but I would bet that it was Charlie Pride. I can't remember. That would be my, my guess would be Kissing Angel Good Morning, but I, I can't. That might have that. Been, that been it. I would. That I would might be have been to it. That. Uh, it was God, funny because going way back. Yes, when Juan and I first got together, because um, I had the long hair and yeah. I had an earring, and oh my, she didn't want yeah. it like that. She didn't, and I ain't changing for nobody. Yeah. So she learned to accept it. Yeah. I think she figured out that it is what it is. And I got to know Bill uh, a little bit. Yep. Up at Berry Gardens. Yeah. And. What an interesting personality on that man. I mean, you get chatting with him and just he, talk about poker face. Yes. Holy shit. You don't yeah. know. You don't know what, what if he's joking or, or not. Right. Yeah, it's been. Uh... And, and just filthy, filthy, <laughs> dirty jokes. Yeah. And some of them I'd whisper into his ear and get him laughing. But I'd have to whisper. Well, you gotta. I mean, yeah. there's ladies. You gotta do what you gotta do. There's ladies, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's been uh, it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, um, it has. So what are you gonna what are you gonna what are you gonna do differently this this summer? Is it, what? Um, well, my plan is I think I'm starting with Claremont this weekend. Okay. I think they're opening this weekend. Uh, the car show at Thunder Road uh, next uh, next Saturday opening day next yes. Sunday. Yes. Um, Barrage opens May seventh with a car show, and then uh, and then stuff at the track. Legion over in Wentworth, New Hampshire, um, has a new owner this year. I'm really excited about that. They moved back. They they moved a couple years ago to Saturdays. Yeah. Uh, they moved back to Friday night, which I am so thankful for, because um, we just couldn't get there on Saturdays and do Bar Barrage. Mm -hmm. um, so Al and I will split time. Uh, going to either Claremont or, or Legion on Friday nights, um, whatever. Like Al, Al drives. I'm so thankful that he, any track that he goes by my house or Thunder Road, or he'll stop and pick me up. Um, That's awesome. It is awesome. Uh, his wife Kathy, we've become really good friends. His brother Andy um, helps in the photo booth at Thunder Road, so we've become good friends. Andy's a he's a 
He also has a history working with the late model team. Um, yeah. He was on pit crew. He's a tour guide at Gettysburg. Uh, so he spends time down there every year doing tours, and he does a lot of stuff on Zoom, I guess. It seems like um, it seems like you, you're very grateful that you you have this. You have this network. You have this this job, if you will, this this passion to be able to to live off of, to thrive from. Absolutely, almost like you you, you might be screwed without it because I, you you love this shit i think that the, all of this whatever you know however we encompass it probably is the reason that i'm still around i think that i would really struggle um because i met so many of the people who are now important to me that's right came from here uh, they came that's from like the me track. that's like that's like me and froggy same right, deal absolutely same deal so i'm Incredibly thankful for that. Um, don't take any of it for granted. Um, I do a lot of other stuff um, that, that this allows me to do. Um, and, and a lot of it is just probably not exciting to anybody else. Um, I, I'm i starting a little free library um, because I love I love the written word. I love book. I love the fact that if you and I sat down and we had 100 words, we, had, we each had a list of 100 words, our story would be completely different using the same words. And I, I love that. Um, so I'm going to hmm. start a, a little library at my house on the lawn. Wanda said I could. <laughs> what, what, are you, what, what are you going to do? What's that going to look like? So that basically will be a, a box beside the road um, that people, so it'll be registered on a website. Um, people can see where it is and they can stop by and you take a book, leave a book, share a book. That's fantastic. Absolutely. There are a couple around in the city. There's one on Mill Street. Um, there's one on Berlin Street. Um, but I want one in my house. I want one that I can keep putting good shit in. I have I have a ton of books that Juan is not a big oh, fan really? of. Um, so I just <clears throat> figured that's... My dad... My dad has read forever. He He's one of those guys that read like three or four books at a time. <sighs> I can't fucking do it. I, no I have no idea. Um, you know, that, that Bible and Moby Dick thing. That was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, he instilled in me the love of Stephen King yeah. because Stephen King, it's not just about horror. It's about stories. Sure. Um, and I think that there are so many people who just don't have the capacity. Mm -hmm. And so I, my plan is to include audio books. Yeah. Um, because so, I know so many people that, are just not able to comprehend. Sure. Um, so sure. I want to do that. I want to just use it as a resource. Mm -hmm. um, we have an amazing, Aldrich Library is amazing. Mm -hmm. We have a great bookstore, Next Chapter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But that's not always accessible for people. Uh, this, in the middle of the night, if you want to come, right. can get a book. Um, Will you let me know when, when this happens? Sure. Hopefully, yeah. uh, I'm... My son at Cody actually works for Techno Metal Post, or I think that's the name of it, yeah. um, which is going to install a base um, so we can put the, the uh, library house on top of it. And yeah. Keep it dry. That's nice. Yeah. I'm going to... Right now, I've been doing a lot of research because it's a national or international thing. Yeah. Um, there's, I guess, 100,000 nationally. Okay. Um, that's so cool. It really is. My they, God. It's... There are just so many folks who, one of the things in my past was at Highgate Departments, um, I was president of the Residence Association there for 10 years um, during the buyout, during the renovation, um, the construction of the community center and the pavilion, the playground. Um, and one of the things that we did that I was really proud of is we talked HUD into allowing us use of one of the vacant units to turn into a lending library. So we had a library at Highgate. Um, that HUD allowed us to use uh, because kids in, in areas like that um, that are far removed from the city without public transportation, really. Sure. <clears throat> that's what they, it, and it wasn't about the book so much. It was about the feeling that they could have the books. Yeah. You know, it's. Um, take one, keep one, but also absolutely. give one. Absolutely. And that's yeah. the idea of this is take a book, share a book. You know, if you want to leave one, 
take one from here, put it somewhere else, take it from here, bring it back, yeah. whatever. Um, they're all free, nothing ever for sale. Um, but th- isn't that the way it should be? Yeah. That's really cool, man. Yeah. So final question. Do bullies suck? So this shirt, the reason I wore this, uh, we have a driver at, at Bear Ridge named Stephen Larry, who is the owner of a company called Staunch Security Systems. Okay. Or Staunch Security. I don't remember exact name. It's probably on here. Um, and they, Stephen is, uh, Stephen is a great dude. He is one of the true great dudes that I've met through racing. Um, Bully Box is a program that a, that a um, teenager down south somewhere created where people in school could um, report bullying Come on. directly to administrators anonymously if they needed to. It was an app. A great idea. Absolutely. Damn. Um, and Steve, seeing that the need is, is everywhere, um, created a bully suck night at Barrage. He put his money where his mouth is. Um, no shit. So he would allow kids would have to sign a pledge. Remember the old pledge, the uh, students against drunk driving pledge. I'll always call for a ride or whatever. Right. He kids had to sign a pledge that they wouldn't bully. And if they promised not to bully, they got to sign the cow, the hood of his car. And then he would race it. And this, so this program was something that it was a, totally out of his pocket. I think he gave away 500 shirts. No, they were all out of his pocket. Um, and he did it for a couple, three years. So, I am a huge supporter of that program. Where can we get? Can we get him on the show? He last I knew lives in New Hampshire. Um, I'm not sure how much time he spends up here at this point uh, because I know that his offices are somewhere in the south. But I could call him. Absolutely, I you, can give you. You'll get me his phone number. Absolutely, I'd love to have him on the show. I think I think that would be great. I think that. Uh, Last I knew, he, he he didn't race last year. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping he's going to race this year. But he had stopped so that he could learn. He, he bought an airplane and wanted to learn how to fly. I mean, who doesn't fucking want to do that? So from one foolishly expensive hobby to another. Yeah. I have some of those. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, get your ass in here more often. Yeah, just, yeah. Listen, let's uh, stop fucking around. And waiting two years before I, I see you again. Well, get yeah. get 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 in here, dude. I wanted to give you a chance to build up, you know, right. some shit before we get thrown out. <laughs> so, yes. I loved having you on last time. I can't believe it was uh, 2019, but uh, yeah, that was amazing. That was uh, that was that walk was so rewarding. And yeah. like I said, we raised four grand. We had 400 people or so for were, suicide awareness. Yes. Suicide right, awareness prevention. Right here in central Vermont. We, uh, there were a couple snafus yeah. that we would do differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was miscommunication about the sound system, mm-hmm. um, which created an, an enormous amount of stress. Um, mm. We had a number of, car, of race cars that that week ended up canceling. So what was supposed to be like 17 cars ended up being seven. Okay. So it looked, it right. looked like we had we had kind of half-assed it together. Sure, it is what it is. Right. Um, and again, if we do a different location, mm-hmm. that alleviates a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Um, because you're only going to use the space you use instead of having this big space you're not using. Sure. Um, but yeah, we had some great folks. We had uh, Real Bouncers up there. Um, we had Alexis mm-hmm. from does the face painting stuff. Yep. It's two years, three years ago now. I'm trying yep. to remember. Yep. Um, but, yeah, we had some amazing stuff. Will this, and, and I know we talked about this a little bit at the, at the front of the show, but w- will this come back? Will this suicide walk come back? I think that in some capacity, something will come back. Um, realistically, all of it. so there were six organizers. Um, and all of us had either struggled with suicide ourselves um, or 
you know, just family, whatever. Sure. Um, and that number's only grown. There's been, it's, it's just so heartbreaking how many folks are struggling with, with mental health and not seeing, you know, this pandemic shit. It just traps so many people that could not get out of their own heads. It, it, things are completely different now. Yes. When it comes to the full full spectrum of mental health pre COVID, I mean, it's totally different now. Yes. So my view of it um, may not be a walk necessarily as much as an event, uh, and I think that I think that we just have to figure out what makes the most sense. Yeah. Um, I yeah. think the walk makes sense if you're doing sponsorship. If you're not, yeah. then just having an event where you have a stage, you have artists like Tim Brick. Um, yeah. Great guy. Tim, I, one of my proudest moments was shooting the, the cover art for his Free to Run CD. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. That was that's right. a highlight of my life. Um, because Got that was him. one of those things for my dad. Yeah. Because my dad... You know, he's he's always been no matter what fucking stupid idea I had, he's they've sure. always my parents have always been incredibly supportive. That's a good parent right there. Absolutely. But my dad has a huge love of music. Mm -hmm. And for me to have a CD cover, mm -hmm. holy Christ. I yeah. mean you don't get better that that's validation. Sure. Sure. I mean, unfortunately that's the only one I've done, so you know, I haven't done another one, but we, we just uh got a comment uh from Becky Wibble saying books are so important we always donate to Race to Read. Yes. Uh we should note here that the founder, uh Troy Kingsbury, uh and Hillary Scott are both gonna be in here on Wednesday the twenty seventh from Race to Read. Uh, awesome coming on. So awesome. I love both of them. The yeah. Race to Read program, I um I think the year that they started, mm -hmm. um, I was able to provide some Victor Lane photos and stuff like that for them yeah. for the booth. And yeah, I love that they have the, a separate space up there at the track that they can just close up at sure. the end of the day. And it's fantastic. Yes, my man, get back in here soon. We'll do that, please. Uh, we we got more drivers coming in here again. We got uh, Caden Fisher's coming in on Friday. Whew. Uh, Kip Stockwell. Is yep. going to be with us uh, tomorrow at noon. You got to get some barrage drivers. You got to get some dirt car drivers. Can you help me out with that? Well, fuck. I mean, I can try. I mean, it depends on how much of this they've watched. Yeah. <laughs> Will they dust themselves off a little bit before no, they come in here? Fuck. Don't no. be a pussy. Dude, uh, <laughs> <laughs> please come back. Please. Sure thing. Uh, say hi to Wanda uh, for us. And uh, I always enjoy sharing a microphone with you, dude. It's fun. I, uh, you I just, wish I could do this more often. but You just candy coat stuff uh, so much and beat around the bush. and uh, you, you know, know, I ran for city council twice. Did you know that? Oh I'm God. serious. Oh <laughs> Both times it brought ex-mayors out of fucking hiding to fucking kick my ass. <laughs> but it was my platform was really easy. Oh, my God. You can't bitch that young people don't have anything to do if you don't give them anything to do. Yeah. You know, that's what it is. That's amazing. What a way to say it. Thank you, brother. Absolutely. Buzz Fisher, this time around on the Aired Out Podcast, live from the ASB Financial Studios and Fly in the Wall Productions, Main Street in Barrie.